is you all know it as the New Testament. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing this because years or a couple of months ago, Kepa brought it to my attention. How come you don't teach the New Testament? Only the Torah. Only the Torah. And I said, very good question. Very, very, very good question. Very legitimate question. So I'm going to start teaching you from the New Testament as well. Okay. And so uh, there is some Hebrew that we're going to touch on. I'm going to show you something that uh, I also learned um, on some of the disciples. I know that Linda said, well, uh, and she asked, or I, I said, well, maybe I'll, I'll bring a, a teaching on the, on, the, uh, on the disciples and how they were persecuted and how they died. Well, today or during this week as I was studying this, <clears throat> you, you, um, you're going to show it in your. I'm going to show you in your in your own Bibles that the translation that is given to us they leave us in limbo. So it's always breaking. Uh, we're going to be in John chapter one, starting verse ten. Okay, John one ten. I hope to do all fifty one verse or forty one verses because it's, it, it ends in verse fifty one. Uh, there's a lot of information there. And there's a portion there about the disciple. The disciple that you're going to learn tonight, he was um, crucified upside down. He was tortured. But eventually, that didn't kill him. So the king, where he was at, decapitated him. Okay? So, so those who you, you have your Bible, we're going to be in John chapter 1. We're getting set up for a second, right? John, Johanan. Ms. Rapp, are you ready? Get your chair. Thank you, Kevin, for the dinner, and we're going to get you your reimbursement. Eh? You guys cool? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Are you happy? Yeah. Okay, so it's um, easier to learn when you have a full belly. I'm sorry. It's easier to learn when you have a full belly. Just don't fall asleep on me because if you fall asleep on me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut down. <laughs> I did that once. I really, I had, I, I, I had this water cannon, and everybody thought I was, I was, I was playing around because people were falling asleep. I said, don't be disrespectful to us, and don't be disrespectful to the Lord. I know you're all are tired, we're tired as well, but we put a lot of effort to try and, and study to give you the, the best possible study that we can give. And so this, so, so people were just, were just falling asleep, literally just snoring. And I said to them, I said, I'm gonna give you a warning. I'm gonna bring a water cannon next week and it's gonna be ice cold water. And then, and the, the following week, when we got to the uh, to the Bible study, it's something that brought the the water cannon into me. <laughs> and I said, "What's that? I told you." <laughs> and if, if it gets hurt, don't blame me. Blame yourself. <laughs> and sure enough, got a couple of individuals and they didn't like it. That was very. He says, "You're you're very rude and you're very disrespectful." And they said, and and they said to me, well, yeah, that's very rude in your part. No, it's rude in your part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're tired, excuse yourself. Yeah. But then they said, but I like to hear the teachings. They're good. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't be disrespectful. This was before I started to record. As we were moving around, some, some of the stuff, my honey found a bunch of CDs that, that I had been pre-recorded when we were in Albuquerque. They, um, um, they recorded some of my teachings, so she found them. We had them on, on floppy CDs. So that was that, that was that was before uh, they were they were they were doing that to me. But some of those teachings, I have gone back and I hear them. I said, "Wow, something amazing, something very good has been a progress." Ready? Okay, we're ready to start. So.
Be blessed. Okay, let's pray. Abena Makin, my father Makin, I thank you for this glorious day, O oh God. I thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come before your presence and give you all the praise and all the accolade for your mercies and your forever. Father, anoint my lips, O oh God. Prepare the hearts of your people. Open our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes that we be sensitive to the voice of the Ruach as you walk in our midst. That you guide us to all truth, O oh Heavenly Father. Father, whatever is not of you, let us discard it. But whatever it is of you, Abba, let us build on it. And Lord, that we can glean and share with others the, your, your beautiful majesty, your grandeur, to those who don't even know you. And to those who have known you already and they have went by the wayside, Father, that you touch their hearts and they come back to you with a repentant heart. Father, in everything you taught me to give you praise and accolade and say, John chapter 1, Yohanan 1. <coughs> And I'm just going to dissect this, this chapter. I'm, I'm going to go all over the spectrum. So, of the four Gospels, I personally believe that this chapter, of, this book of John, is the most spiritual, if I could say that term, or I could say the word mystical, than all of the other three Gospels. This is the most mystical of all. Okay, so chapter 1, starting in verse 10, and it says, He was in the world, and the world knew him not. Okay? Ko haya ve'olam ve'cha'olam ni'icha ayado ve'cha'olam oto lo yada. That's that verse in Hebrew. So I'm going to dissect this verse for us. So let's say what it says. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. I want us to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. He came into his world, and the world knew him not. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. So who were these people that knew him not? Obviously, it was the Yehudim, the Jews. If you look at what the scripture says, these twelve Yeshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into the city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? He's making a distinction who he was going to go and reach. Okay? Now, remember when I, when I did the teaching of Les Lecha? And I brought you the, the little an analogy of Luke chapter 19 for Zacchaeus. We ran up a sycamore tree. Remember that? On that teaching, I, mentioned, I failed to mention to you that... That wood on the sycamore tree was one of the woods that was used to make the cross when the Messiah was, was crucified. Mm -hmm. It was a hard wood. Okay? The sycamore. But that's a different teaching. So let's, so let's, let's get into it. So it says, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him. Le Haolam. Okay? So, Vechaolam again, and the world knew him not. 
I'm going to move on. Let me go back into John. There we go. John 1. All right. So as I was, as I was reading this, this word, um, let's, let's break down John 1. Okay. The first, the, the, the first one is going to be concerning Yeshua. Part 1. Concerning Yeshua. Scott, why don't you read verse 9 for us? Uh, John 1. John 1, verse 9. Concerning Yeshua, it's going to be uh, John 1, verses uh, 9 and 10. Okay, Nathan? <coughs> 9 and 10. There was the true light, even the light which lighteth every man coming into the world. John 1, 9. Okay. Want me to continue? No, that's it. John 8, 12. John 8, 12. Here we are, John 8, 12. Anybody want to read it? 8, 12. John 8, 12. You're chapter 8, right? Chapter 8 of John. <coughs> Verse 12. <coughs> Therefore, Yahshua spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but possess the light of life. So he claims to be the or, the light, right? Yes. All right. So now we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to go to um, part two concerning John the Baptist. This is going to be in verses. 15 through 18 concerning John the Baptist verse 15 John bore witness of him and cried, and cried saying this was he of whom I spake he that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me what was that sir? John 1 verse 15. John 1 15. Okay. Uh, through 18. Okay. Now, you're going to say, well, I already know that. Baruch Hashem. I'm just going to build a little bit more on, I'm going to enlighten you more. Uh, please give me the time and, and watch what I'm going to do here for you. Verse 14. Anybody? John 1 14. And the Word became flesh, tabernacled among us, and we beheld his glory, glory as of an, an only begotten one from the Father, full of grace and of truth. And the Word became what? Flesh. Flesh, what? So it's ve. So in the Hebrew, that word is ve hadavar. So let's do a little bit of gamatra. You got your your cheat sheet? No. Yeah. I'll give it to you. I'll give you one. Okay. So you're gonna have a vav. <coughs> a hey, a dalit, a vet, and a resh. Okay? This means word. But before, before that, we're going to put a yod to the, to the far left, to the far right. Put it. Put a yod and then put a a dollar. So now we have in the word in the word. Just, just 
for, for giggles and grins, let's check it. Let's just do the first or the second word. Okay, at the bar. So, you have a vowel, right? And the vowel, the numerical value of the vowel is what? Six. Six, right? Okay. What's the next letter that we, that we have there? Mm -hmm. That's a five, okay, and then? Four, and then? And then? Resh? 200. So what's the gematria? Sixteen. Two sixteen. It means to surround, right? He's gonna surround you. Why? Let's keep on. Why does he have the yacht in front of it? Yacht had a bar. Well, in the translation, it says they had the bar. No, it's got you got, but you have. <coughs> Yod or Yod, ve had the bar. Ve had the bar. No. You have one word, the very beginning, mm -hmm. it's got Yod. Got a Yod and a Dalit, and then it's got Va, He, Dalit, Ve, Resh. You got two words up there. Isn't it two seventeen? I'm sorry? Is it not supposed to be two seventeen? Because five and six is, is eleven plus four. My, oh, Bethany. <laughs> Okay, now we're cooking. Well, what's going on here? Okay. So that One, takes it right Allah. back to Aleph. That's Allah. perfect. That's perfect. It goes back to Aleph. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. It goes back to the Father, right? Okay. But again, why do you have the, the first word Yod there? That's a good question. Let me continue. Circle that one with a, with a, with a red marker. The first two letters. The first two letters. All right. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Let's move on. So. <laughs> the word. That's cool. That is very cool. Okay. So. That is too cool. Let us go and let us let us continue. Wow. Verse 16, he says, And of his fullness have we coming. received, and grace for grace. Right? Chesed al chesed. Chesed al has said okay so here's where I got to say oh this is gonna be neat look at verse 17 verse 17 who would like to read that verse Come on, come be back in. The law was given through Moshe, grace and truth came through Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay. Now, Moshe, right? Put the word Moshe in Hebrew. Amen. In. And the last letter is a hey, no? Or is it a head? It's a hey. What's the numerical value of that word? Forty. No, Ben is forty. And Shin is three hundred. So 345. 
tree, the gimel. Mm -hmm. To lift up, right? Mm -hmm. Check this out. And I thought this is I thought this is going to be fun here. I'm, I'm going to share here with you. The word law. See, the word law that condemns in the moral of life, and it only tip and it only typifies in the religious life. The word Moses was, is mentioned in the Gospel of John 13 times. Okay? And it says that if you, if you, if you, uh, if you really want to uh, put the word grace in, in English up there. Put the word grace in English. So what is grace? Chesed? Am I right? Yes. Yes? Yes. So we had a so we have a a a, a um het 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 the psalmic dalit. Psalmic dalit. That's Hesed. Put that in here and uh, put that in my book. No, she's here. got Hesser up there, though. There you go. I know, I just gotta. Eight. Oh, 50, 60. 60. And is four. So we got what? Check this out. <clears throat> Verse. Oh, now wait a minute. Go ahead, I'm sorry. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yeshua, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says Jesus Christ. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So, if this is true, this does not mean that there is that there was no Torah before Moses. It does not mean that there was no Torah? Right. Okay. This does not mean that there was no Torah before Moses. Or no grace and truth before Yeshua. Okay. The Torah itself is truth. And And the New Testament is law. You with me? Okay. In the New Testament, you have 1,050 commands. Put 1,050. In the New Testament. The idea here is that the fullness of grace came by Yeshua. One can get today in fullness without men receive only the part of the old times. So, what I'm going what I'm, what, what I'm to share with you is this. A friend of mine was gathering chores to, to go to Israel. And he asked me, he said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm teaching Torah. And out of his lips, he said, oh, you're teaching the law. Yeah. He said, what do you mean? Yeah, you're teaching the law. We're under grace. And I told him, I says, there's more grace in the Old Testament than in the New Testament. 
if you really want to get down to semantics. Sure. And he just gave me about 30 minutes of a, of, he, he wouldn't let me share. He, he, just, he just ran over it. At the, end of the, at the end of this conversation, he says, oh, I'm putting together a trip for this ministry that I'm involved with to go to Israel. And then I said to him, I don't want to go with you. <laughs> Besides, you're going to the land where you say that we're teaching law. I don't want to go with you. Because you better get your teachings in order. Because there's more grace, there's more chesed in the Torah than in the Brim HaGadash. <coughs> and when I said that I don't want to go with him, he just backed off. He says, you're wrong. Well, pray for me then. Don't judge me. You just pray for me. Was he an English only American? No. But I looked at that because in his doctrine where he's been in, he, he's been indoctrinated, he would be indoctrinated only a certain way. And that's wrong. You gotta have the the, the venue to see things from a different perspective. Remember the the analogy that I shared with you when I came to Judaism that, that my Hebrew teacher said. When I know that you know your Bible, and then this is the, the window that you see, but allow Hebrew to expand that vision and do this. Mm -hmm. And guess what's happening? And it expanded me more. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Verse 18, I thought it was very cool. It says, No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, and he had declared him. Can we erase that for the time being? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> That's worth getting a shot. It really is. That's huge. You saw the word come back to the Father, huh? That's, that's huge. I just want that specific detail. Jan, do you have anything for him? Questions? Okay. Wow. Wow. Brother, um, Gabriel, Jesus was asking what's Yeshua. Yeshua is the name of the Hebrew of the Messiah. Okay. Okay. This is another very profound lesson. Because the name Jesus is also the name of the Greek. It is Jesus. A Greek God. And because they didn't use the name Yeshua, que es un nombre verdadero, usaban el nombre greco, Jesús. Pero es otro, otra enseñanza completamente. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, well, I thought verse 18 was very, very neat. I read it to you from, a, from the Hebrew perspective translation. Jeff, I read it from the English perspective, verse 18. 118, John? Yeah, well, where, where is John chapter 1? Okay. No one has ever seen Elohim, the only brought forth Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he did declare. So, again, otra vez, Kappa? No one has ever seen Elohim, the only brought, so, brought forth Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, who declared. All right. The actual translation, it says, No man had seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. Totally different. 
from the Hebrew to the English translation. Okay? So, let's do something. Um, let's see, how can, I, how can I bring this to you? Because this is going to be good. Let me, um, I want you to put a Greek word up there for me. Put gr. This is when, when you, whenever we see the word gr, that's Greek. Okay. Just put gr. Period. And and the word is ho roa, and it's h o r a o. H o r a o. This word in the actual he, uh, Greek meant, as we see in the English, sin. S-E-E-N. And it means to see with the eyes and also see with the mind. To see with the eyes and to see with the mind. How can you see with the mind? Huh? But that's, like you said, that's a very Greek Concept. The concept. That's not Hebraic. Concept. That is not Hebraic. I understand, at all. Daniel. Don't get excited, Daniel. <laughs> well, I just want to see where you're going with this. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you the best liner. I, I'll, uh, I'll back off. I'll just sit there and introduce that part of it. Don't shoot the messenger, okay? No, I'm not shooting the messenger. Not yet. <laughs> we didn't, we, Fred's not been called into this story yet. Okay, so in the Hebrew is, and, it, and, and, it's, and it's very neat how we're, we're going to see it in, in the Hebrew. It says, "Ki," uh, excuse me, "Et ha Elohim." Et ha Elohim. Aleph top. Okay. Elohim. You want high Elohim or high Elohim? Okay. Aleph. Aleph. Lamed. Hey. Yod. Mem Sophie. This says, no man had seen God. Okay? I think you're missing a... Well, the first verb. part is key. Key? Uh-huh. Key, yeah. Right. But shouldn't have something like... No, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, it's et ha Elohim. Okay? Where are you at? Let me tell... Verse, verse 18. Okay, let me look this up, because I have the Hebrew. Okay? So... Mm -hmm. What are we? What am I getting to this? Now, has anybody seen God? No. God says no. Have we? Seen, have, have they seen the the backside of God? Yes. Yes. Who? Moses. Moshe. Moshe. No. You're missing low ra with an aleph. Et ha Elohim lo ra. Yeah, but the, that, well, yeah. Because you got to have the lo ra in right. order to make sure you get the scene. Right. But et ha Elohim is not okay. no man has seen God. Right. Okay. So let's put lo ha ra. Below that. Lamed aleph. Lamed aleph. And then resh aleph hey. That's two words actually. Just spread it out. <clears throat> Resh Aleph A. Yeah. Now that now it makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> so no man has seen God. Basically, that's what we're saying. Right? We okay with that? It says, 
that it means here to comprehend fully or understand is clear that the fact that that many men have seen God with the eyes. Scripture. Scotty? Give me a word to read, Scotty. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Betty Sheep. I'm going to go to this too as well. Yep, are you okay, Kappa? You sure? Because I'm going to teach you only till 8 o'clock and then Scotty's going to take over. Okay? Okay. Let's see here. You know that word also means lung? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Scotty. Bereshit 18.2. Read, read verse 1. 18, 2? 18 verse 1 and 2. Okay. What chapter? 18, 18. Genesis 18. Verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. And Jehovah appeared unto him by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat in the tent of the day, in the, in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood over against him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet him from the tent door and bowed himself to the earth. Okay. In Hebrew, it says the word for men is anasim. Right, Daniel? Anasim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same verse. Verse 2 of chapter 18. It says men, anasim. Does it say God? No. In the Hebrew? What is in your Bibles? Which one? 18, 18 chapter 18, 18 verses Cha 1 and 2. Chapter 18. Sir. Chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. Does Adam have a relationship? No. No, two. No. Oh, it says that three men stood over against him. Yeah. yeah. It's three men. It three doesn't men. say God. It doesn't say God, does it? No. No, it says opposite men, opposite men. John 18, verse no, 2. No, no, no. Genesis. Genesis. 18. Okay. Genesis, Bereshit 18, verses 1 and 2. Three men standing opposite him. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't even say angel. It doesn't say by the him either. So why did he, why did he bow down? Manasim. Manasim is just men. It doesn't say Malikim in the Hebrew. Does it? Is, is this the same word for Anusim? No, just for what it's worth? Anusim is men. Yeah, but is this the same word as Anusim? Um, uh, yeah, right, I'm right. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. No. Would that be above insert, inserted in there? Could be. Yeah, right? I'm going to have to play with that one at some point. So who's he talking to right there? Well, he's talking to men, but in our Bibles, it says, some says angels. So who's right and who's wrong? This is from the Hebrew. So, so yes. if you keep going a little further, you got Likra Tam. You see that? Uh, right. To meet them. Likra well. them. And then he says that he bought himself. Why would he buy why would he bow to men? Did he see something? Now, who is bowing down? Abraham is bowing down to these men. Yes. Scott? You really want me to get into it? Yeah, get into it. Yes. Okay, so the first verse says it, that he sees God. There is two ideas behind this. That he was either in a vision right. and he was seeing God. And then the vision was broken. Peyote induced? Let's not do that. Daniel, come on. Just hide. Okay. This is the two. So this means he was communing with God. However, it the rabbis say that when he's when he speaks, he speaks to God as in, hold on, I have to entertain these men. He sees them. They are men. Now, why would he bow? Because he's the father of hospitality. Right. 
It shows how a great man understood his own humility. He was humble. We take that these are angels because after this story, two angels appear in Sodom and Gomorrah. And we impose that on this text to say he entertained angels. But nowhere in this text does it say he entertained God or angels. It says men. Thank you. You understood that? No. What I okay. Now we know it was. I don't think it was a vision because it says here in the heat of the day. I mean, do you get visions in the heat of the day? Well, you not. sure could. Yeah. It's like a mirage, kind of like. No. No. The first verse. We're looking at the first yeah. verse. It says that he was speaking to God, and then in the second verse, that whatever he's communing with God is broken. Because of the men walking up, they appear. Okay? It has nothing to do with the heat of the day. The, but the question is, is how was he speaking to God? Was he in a vision or was he just in prayer? That's the question. <laughs> now it gets more a little bit more personal because when you are in prayer, and you're really intense in prayer, God manifests himself in numerous ways. I, in particular, I smell a fragrance in my study room. And I know that he's there. And I'm just totally lost. I have seen that. Yes, sir. I have a question on that. When you, are, when you actually pray too and you start feeling heat, and like he like fire is that means he's he's it could present. be it could his be. presence is between us yes it yes. could be because oh. I have felt that before because okay you weren't there in the study when we did on um, Sukkot one of the teachings I did was on Moses when Moses is before the burning bush right and Moses sees this bush being consumed with fire but the bush was not burning. I mean, there was fire in the bush, but the bush was not being consumed. And I said, we are that bush. Because God is in us, and he doesn't consume that because of his mercy. Okay? That's the love of God for you. But God will manifest himself in numerous ways. I just show one that I that I had experienced. And there are times when you can really really be in in, in, in prayer. You can be in the word. You're just so engulfed by the word. And God manifests himself in a, in a way that you don't want to come down to reality. You're there. And that's the beauty of this. In order for you to get to that point. I'm going to take you now to the next verse where there is one disciple of the twelve that God saw no guile in him. No sin in him. He was perfect. And when you see this, people to this very day, I believe that there are certain people among us who are just as perfect as this disciple was. Before he was a disciple. You want to know who this guy is? Nathaniel. Yeah. Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Let's go. Let's move on. Just real quick, that word ra. We just did the Torah portion last week or two weeks ago. Why do you rock? Same Resh Aleph combo. Right. I want to contrast that with Resh Ayin. Well, that's, that's, your, your, that's, your, that's your homework. You can bring it to us. No, well, if you ever see Resh Ayin, guys, it's just uh, that's a Rasha or an evil person. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So. Okay. Let's move on. It sounds the same. Let's go to uh, verse 35. I'm moving on. Okay. Verse 35. Of John. <clears throat> 35. John 1, 35. 
Yes, John chapter 135. Okay, who's the audience? Me, <laughs> the usual. Where's the water book? Again, the following day, John was standing with two of his... Two of his who? Taught ones. Okay, disciples. Okay. Keep okay. going. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And looking at Adonis, no, no, Yeshua. Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And looking at Yeshua walking, he said, See the Lamb of Elohim? Stop right there. Okay. okay. Again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples. It says, Of his disciples, right? Yohanan O M Shemiyin Mi Talmidav. Okay? Me, Tamidav, his disciples. And he said, The Yar el Yeshua, Mikhalech Vayomer, Kini se ha Elohim. Behold the Lamb of God. So, verse 37. What does it say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Laura, oh, I'm sorry, 37? Yes. And the two disciples heard him speaking, and they followed Yeshua. Okay. I thought this was very interesting here. Because the two disciples heard of him, and they followed him. Okay. Who were those two disciples? They were with John. Peter and Simon? No. Andrew. Andrew is one of them. Andrew's one of them. Because if you see the narrative, it's going to tell you in verse 40, one of the two which heard John speak and follow him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And the word kappa here means stone. Just out of curiosity, what's Andrew in Hebrew? <coughs> Andrew in Hebrew, vamos a, ver, vamos a ver, vamos a ver, that would be uh, 40. Uh, Is it Lion? Andy Ree. Como? Andy Ree, Andy Ree, A-N-D-E-R-A-I. Interesting. Andre, you mean? Andre. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go to the bathroom before I have an accident. Excuse me. Hey, Mom, take five. Yeah.